The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Meet the People. In the newspaper world, ladies and gentlemen, there's a famous saying that names make news. And that's equally true in the field of desserts, where right now the name that's making big news is Jell-O Puddings. Jell-O Puddings are made by the same firm that makes Jell-O, for over 40 years America's favorite gelatin dessert. And just as you've enjoyed Jell-O, I know you'll really go for these new creamy puddings. Jell-O Puddings are wonderfully quick and easy to prepare, too. Merely add milk, cook a few minutes, and cool. And there's as fine a pudding as ever came out of a kitchen. Gloriously smooth and creamy, and chuck full of rich, mellow flavor. Flavor so delicious that it outrivals any other pudding you've ever tasted. You can enjoy Jell-O puddings in all three of those grand old pudding flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. So do as thousands of others are doing every day. And when you ask your grocer for Jell-O, tell him to include several packages of Jell-O puddings, too. Remember, Jell-O puddings are made by the makers of Jell-O, so you'll know they're good. Meet the people played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as is customary every Sunday night at the Wait a minute, Don. Wait a minute. Hold everything. This introduction is on me. All right, boys, let's have it. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present the bridegroom of the Jell-O program, Don Wilson. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, there you are, Don. There's our little send-off for you. And we all wish you and the bride a lot of success and happiness. Well, thank you, Jack. Thanks very much. Why, Don, you're blushing. I am Don. You are, too. <laughs> Look at them, folks. 300 pounds of love. <laughs> Tell me, Don, uh, where did you, uh, where'd you spend your honeymoon? We went down to Coronado Beach for three days. Oh, Coronado is an ideal place for a honeymoon. A beautiful hotel, gorgeous scenery, and a lovely swimming pool. Yes, and a terrible thing happened, Jack. What? We forgot to take our bathing suits. Oh, that was a shame. <laughs> a fine honeymoon with no swimming. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, Don. Hello, Don. Congratulations to the bridegroom. Oh, thanks, Mary. Isn't that wonderful, Mary? Just think. Little Cupid shot his arrow and hit our own Donzy. Well, if Cupid couldn't hit Wilson, he ought to go out of business. <laughs> Mary, be sentimental, will you? Say, by the way, Don, did you get the uh, wedding present I sent you? I hope you liked it. Oh, it's beautiful, Jack. Thanks. I haven't seen any of those in a long time. Well, it was no easy job getting it. I had a shop all over. Uh, what did he give you, Don? A lovely bowl of wax fruit. <laughs> Yes, sir. You know, Don, I was going to send you some silverware, but you know how it is. Everybody sends silverware. Everybody but Benny. He sends wax fruit. <laughs> and I knew what I was doing, Mary. You know, newlyweds always get more silver than they can use. Well, not in our case, Jack. As a matter of fact, we didn't get any silver at all. Oh, Don, I wish I had known that. Yeah, you could have sent him a lock of your hair. <laughs> All right, Mary, how was I to know? I never saw anybody like you, Jack. You always give the oldest, corniest presents. Is that so? Last year on my birthday, you sent me a bustle. But it was full of chocolates. Don't forget that. <laughs> Supposed to be a novelty. I spent a dollar and a half a pound for that bustle, and she's complaining. Anyway, Don... Well, what good is candy after you sit on it? You weren't supposed to sit on it. Anyway, Don... Hard centers yet. <laughs> Now, Mary, forget it. Anyway, Don liked the wedding gift I sent him. He said it was lovely. Sure was, Jack. But I meant to tell you something about that bowl of fruit. 
Oh, is there something wrong with it? Yes, one of the bananas doesn't light up. <laughs> it doesn't? No. Well, take it back, brother. <laughs> take it back. I bought it at Magnon's and it's guaranteed. Magnon? Yes, Sam Magnon's. He's got an antique shop in Pismo Beach. <laughs> Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, hello, Don. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Phil. So you went and done it, eh, Don, you lucky son of a gun? Yes, sir, and I'm very happy. <laughs> oh, I envy you, kid. That's the life, believe me. What? You know, you know, Jackson, a guy gets pretty tired of running around night after night, no sleep, no home life. What does it get you? Is he kidding? <laughs> No, on the level, fellas, I'd like to move away from the city and buy a little ranch out in the valley. Well, why don't you? That fresh air would kill me. <laughs> I believe you. Phil, you're a fine guy to talk about settling down. The hours you keep. Well, I can't help it, Jackson. I work at the Wilshire Bowl every night until 1 o'clock, don't I? Well? By the time I get a cup of coffee, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> 4 a.m.? Phil, why don't you try having a cup of coffee just once without taking the waitress home? <laughs> Just once. Well, you know me, I gotta have sugar with my coffee. <laughs> Do you get it, Jackson? No, Phil, I'm not as sharp as I used to be. Well, don't you get it? The waitress is sweet, so Go I... Go on, you corny Joe. <laughs> Mary, can you imagine a guy pulling one like that and then trying to explain it? You think that's bad? You should have heard the gag he pulled at the bowl the other night. What was it? Well, Phil was announcing a song, so he said... And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next number is all about the manicurist who married the millionaire. What was the title of it? I'll never file again. <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> you know, Phil, if you'd keep your mouth shut at the Wilshire Bowl, they could put a cover charge on. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Gee, what I know about Don Wilson. What? I saw him at the Coronado Hotel last week, and he wasn't alone. <laughs> That was his wife. Oh. For your well, information, Dennis, he got married. Congratulations, Mr. Wilson. Well, thank you, Dennis. You know, that marriage business might be all right for a guy like you, but none of that stuff for me. Listen, young man, it wouldn't hurt you to meet some nice little home girl and settle down. Nothing doing. I wouldn't give up Hetty Lamar for anything in the world. <laughs> Hetty Lamar? Why, she doesn't even know you're alive. I can wait. <laughs> Well, Dennis, while you're waiting, how about singing your song right now? Okay. I'm going to sing Two Dreams Met, and I dedicate it to Mr. and Mrs. Don Wilson and Hetty Lamar. All right. Go ahead. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I shot an arrow into the air and hit Don Wilson. You know where. <laughs> well, who are you? I am Cupid with no clothes on. And now I'll run. I'm nearly froze on. <laughs> Well, that's the most stupid Cupid I've seen in years. Sing, Dennis. Oh, 
Met sung by Dennis Day, and very good. You know, Dennis, there have been a lot of dream songs lately. Yeah, lately. <laughs> Two dreams met, Dream Valley. Now I lay me down to dream of you. That seems to be the Vogue right now. Yeah, the Vogue. <laughs> Dennis. And they're all good, too. That's the funny part of it. Talking about dream songs, Jackson, I just wrote a Lulu. It's going to be published in a couple of weeks. What's the name of your song, Phil? Eskimo Dream Girl, Don't Blubber Over Me. <laughs> oh, well, that's a beautiful thought. Don't blubber over me. What's it about? Is it a ballad? Well, it's a sort of a torch song. It's about an American guy that goes up to Alaska and he meets this Eskimo girl. Uh-huh. But she can't speak Eskimo, so uh, the Eskimo? guy... Eskimo? <laughs> First place, it's but he can't speak Eskimo. What's that? Well, uh... That's, That's right. Language. Language. You don't speak at That's all. Right. Well. <laughs> Not even you can't read your own line, but you don't know what page it's on. <laughs> well, Phil, what's the outcome of this fascinating saga of the North? Well, the guy drives away with his dog team, uh -huh. and the girl stands there waving her igloo at him. Phil, an igloo is a house made of ice Oh, well, I better rewrite that part Yeah, learn how to read, too <laughs> Reading's not going to help this any <laughs> <laughs> Say, Mary Mary, how about you and me singing it some night? You can be my Eskimo girl I'd rather be the dog team <laughs> You got something there. Well, speaking of Alaska, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about Jell-O. What? Whether you live in Sitka, Juneau, or Ketchikan, why don't you run down to your neighborhood grocer and catchy box of tempting, delicious Jell-O? Catchy box? Why, Doc? For Juneau and I know that it's twice as good as ever before. Hmm, I wonder how he's going to work Sitka in there. So look for the big red letters on the box. I will now Sitka down. <laughs> Well, I'll be darned he did it. <laughs> Don, only the fact that you got married last week excuses that surrealist plot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to announce Dennis. What do you got your hand up in the air for? I want to ask a question. Oh. Well, in the first place, this isn't a schoolroom. And in the second place, when you want to ask a question, you raise all fingers, not just one. <laughs> Now, what's the question? Well, my mother wants to know if we're going to be in Waukegan for the Christmas holidays. No, Dennis, we're not going to Waukegan. As a matter of fact, fellas, the premiere of my picture is going to be held in New York City. New York City? Yes. Alan wanted it in Old Orchard, Maine, and I wanted it in Waukegan, so I figured New York would be a fair uh, compromise. What do you mean, a fair compromise? I mean, just what I say. What are you talking about? Old Orchard, Maine is much closer to New York than Waukegan is. It is not. It is, too. Would you like to make a little bet on that, about 50 bucks? You're darn right I would. Well, go find a sucker. Don't bother me. <laughs> I guess that'll hold you, brother. Oh, boy, are you a welcher? I'm not a welcher. But I don't believe in gambling when there are miners present. Dennis is over 21. I mean coal miners. There are three boys in Phil's band from Scranton. <laughs> the trombone section with the candle in their derby. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
let's forget it. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, uh, pardon me, Jack. Yes, Don. Would you mind terribly if I ran along? I promised the little woman that I'd get home early tonight. No, no, go right ahead, Don, but I was going to buy you a bottle of champagne across the street at the tropics right after the show. You know, I think a celebration is in order. Oh, say, I've got a great idea. Why don't you and the gang come over to the house? I want you all to meet my wife. Tonight? Oh, Don, that would be an imposition. Five of us barging in without any notice or anything. Oh, it's no imposition at all. Peggy, I'd love to have you. But, Don, don't you think you ought to call your wife up and let her know we're coming? You know, barging in like this with a whole gang of people. No, Jack, the little woman won't mind. Really, she's a peach. Well, all right. Come on, fellas, let's go. Wait a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, I haven't got time to talk to you now. We're on our way to the valley. Well, I heard you say you were going to New York for the premiere. Does that include your loyal, devoted, and I got my clothes packed already, butler? <laughs> Yes, but I don't know why I'm taking you. The last time we were in New York, I didn't see you for two weeks. You didn't look in the right places. <laughs> I'm not supposed to look for you. You're working for me, remember? Yes, sir. Imagine packing already. I never saw anybody so anxious to leave. Boss, I can't wait till I get to New York. Uh -huh. You know, the last time we were there, I only got halfway through the Metropolitan Museum. Uh-huh. And the view from the Statue of Liberty. Why, of course... <laughs> I could just stand there for hours, lost in meditation. Uh-huh. And you know that library on Fifth Avenue? Yes. Well, that offers endless cultural opportunities of which one must imbibe freely. I see. <laughs> then from what I understand, Rochester, you're only interested in the cultural side of New York. Up to dust, then strap me down. <laughs> I know you look like a book. Now, listen, Rochester. I have to prepare for the trip east, so I want you to send my heavy overcoat to the cleaners. Oh, yes, the one with the green velvet collar. That's black velvet. Have you seen it lately? <laughs> Never mind. Just send it to the cleaners. Okay. Oh, say, boss. What? I think you ought to give up that job as dog catcher of Beverly Hills. Why? You know those two great Danes you captured yesterday? Yes. Well, Mr. Daryl Zanuck was just here and says one of them is his polo pony. Which one? The one that Winnie's. Well, all right, give it to him. Goodbye. Goodbye. Say, boss, I don't think the other one's a great Dane either. It is, too. Okay, I'll take the saddle off. So long. That's the last time I'll go out chasing dogs without my glasses. Well, come on, fellas, let's go. I've got cab waiting, Jack. That's well, but I still think you ought to call up your wife. Oh, Don knows what he's doing. All right, all right, let's go then. I'm still worried. Are you sure your wife won't mind? No, oh, she'll be delighted to have you. Am I heavy on your lap, Miss Livingston? Yeah. Phil, why don't you hold Dennis for a while? I just had my pants pressed. Put him on the floor. <laughs> Phil. Well, here we are. Uh, driver, pull up at that little white cottage there. Okay. 
Well, this is it, fellas. How much is that, driver? Two dollars and 35 cents. Here you are. Wait a minute, Don. Wait a minute. This is on me. Oh, no. I want to pay it. Gee, you got a cute house there, Don. <laughs> Yes, sir. Nothing doing, Dennis. I want to pay the fare. Oh, Mr. Harris, let me pay it. Next time, Dennis. This is my tree. No, I insist on paying. Got rose bushes around the door and everything. Oh, it's beautiful, you know. Oh, Jack, pay for the cab and let's go in. Pay for it? I'm not even in the argument. <laughs> pay for it. Oh, all right. How much did you say that was, driver? Two thirty-five. Here. Here's two fifty. Keep the change. Oh, goody. Now my wife can have another baby. <laughs> Wise guy. Well, let's, uh, let's go in, Don. You know, Jack, I was just thinking that maybe I should have called up my wife first. What? Well, with five people barging in unexpectedly, it might kind of upset her. That's what I told you at the studio. I told you to call up your wife. Come on, Don, don't be afraid. Let's go in. Oh, it's not that I'm afraid, Phil. I, I just... can understand Don's side of it, all of us barging in like this. Barging, smarging. I said that at the studio. <laughs> I said, let's call the little woman up. <laughs> call her up, I said. Quiet, will you? Now, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, fellas. Uh, you all hide in the rose bushes, and I'll go in and tell Peggy that some of the gang might drop in unexpectedly. That'll kind of soften the blow. What blow? I told you at the studio. Oh, come on, Jackson. Let's do it his way. All right, all right. Come on, we'll hide in the rose bushes. Ouch, these thorns. Make it snappy, Don. Silliest thing I've ever heard of. Oh, be quiet and get off my foot. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Well, darling, you're home early. Oh, I told you I would be. Gee, I'm hungry, dear. We got something good for supper? Well, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't have a chance to do any shopping, so I'll just open a can of tuna fish. Oh, that's well, dearest. Hmm. Then two and a half already. I'm going to get tuna fish. <laughs> what are you worrying about? You're not even in yet. Thing that burns me up, I'm the guy that told him to call her up. <laughs> hey, Jackson, have you got a cigarette? What? I say, have you got a cigarette? No, here's a cigar. Thanks. Oh, boy, Corona, Corona. Don't let the label fool you. <laughs> Very funny. I wonder if Don's gonna be... Hey, Dennis, stop eating those roses. Well, I'm hungry. So am I, but I'm gonna wait. How are they? <laughs> they need salt. Oh, stop. Hey, quiet, fellas. The porch light just went on. Hey, fellas, are you still there? Yeah. Yes. Well, I just told Peggy that I saw Phil and Mary pulling up in the car, so you two better come on in first. What about me? You weren't in the car. Well, for Pete's sake, I could be. You made the whole thing up. <laughs> Let's all go in. No, you can't do that. Mary and Phil come first. Okay. See you later, Jack. It's the darnest mess I ever got into. Yeah. I told him at the studio, five <laughs> Call her up, Don. Call up your wife. That's all. Call up the little woman. <laughs> but no, no, he has to be a wise guy. And on top of that, it looks like it's gonna rain. It'll be wonderful for the roses. <laughs> Not for the roses. If I get pneumonia once more, I'm a goner. Yeah. Roses. Hmm. I wouldn't mind waiting out here, but the worst of it is I gotta talk to you. What do we talk about? Nothing. <laughs> Just be quiet and eat your roses. Getting chilly, too. Here comes Don again. Psst. Psst. Hey, Dennis, come on in. Dennis? Yeah, I told my wife I just saw him riding up on his bicycle. Well, as long as you're dreaming things up, why didn't you see me on the handlebar? <laughs> Use your bean. Don't worry, Jack, you're next. Well, look who's here, darling, Dennis Day. 
Look at here, darling. Then it's day. I ought to have my head again. I can't get over it. If I told him once at the school, I told him five times. Call your wife. Let's not barge in on the little woman. Oh, fine. It's gonna rain, all right. Can't get over that guy. I begged. I pleaded. Right? Don, I said, call her. Don't barge in on the little woman. Call her up. Let her know we're coming. Never saw anything. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, here it comes. I'm going to get soaked. Oh, the heck with Wilson. I'm going to walk right in that house, ready or not. If he thinks I'm going to stay... Pick him up, buddy. <laughs> huh? You heard me. Stick him up. Stick him up? Are you a burglar? I ain't Santa Claus. Now, look. Look, mister. Come on, come on. Where do you carry it, though? In my right shoe. <laughs> but look, mister... I was invited to a party in this house. I'm not even supposed to be out get here. Get that shoe off. Gee, it's raining. I'll get my foot wet. Now, please. Hey, Jack! Oh, Jack! I'm... Keep your mouth shut or I'll drill you. But he's calling me. Can't you hear? Jack! Jack! Where are you? Not a peep out of you, buddy. There's hmm. nobody out there, darling. You must have been mistaken. Oh, I guess I was, dear. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, buddy. Off with that shoe. Now, listen, mister. If I take this shoe off, I'll never get it back on again. I haven't got my button hook with me. <laughs> now, please, go away. Come on, give me a dough. But listen, buddy, this isn't fair. I wouldn't have been here at all if Don Wilson had taken my advice. What are you talking about? I'm not kidding you, buddy. If I told him once, I told him a thousand times. <laughs> Call up your wife, Doug. Five people barging in on the little woman. It's an imposition. But would he listen to me? No. He had to be a wise guy. A smart ass. He wouldn't listen. Friends, one of the easiest ways to do away with mealtime monotony is to serve a wide variety of desserts. But finding new and different treats for the family is no small task. And so that's why every Sunday we try to bring you some new dessert suggestions. This week's specialty is a swell, eye-filling, taste-teasing dessert that looks like a million dollars, and yet it's as simple to make as can be. Just make up one package of strawberry jello and whip as directed on the box. Fold in one and one-half cups of sweetened cooked apricot pulp. Then pile in sherbet glasses, chill until firm, and there you are. Quick, easy, and delightfully good, a dessert that really tastes grand. For strawberry jello, like raspberry jello, now has a flavor that's better than ever by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And that's what gives strawberry jello its new distinctive goodness. Enjoy it tomorrow by serving this gay, creamy combination of golden apricots and rich crimson strawberry jello. Darn it. I got all my dough. I can't get my shoe back on. Oh, well. Uh, pardon me. Does Don Wilson live in this house? He's married, Cupid. You got him once. Why don't I write things down? <laughs> Good night, folks. J-E-L-L. -L.